air out here is a damn sight better than in Fort Joy, eh? If Anne salutes right back, then grabs you in an unexpected bear hug. Truth be told, I couldn't have done it without your help. But you know, a contract's not complete until you hand it in. So I'm not putting my feet up just yet. If Anne shrugs off his backpack and reaches into its depths, after rummaging around, he holds out a tattered page to you, upon which you can see a broken wax seal in the shape of a wolf's paw. Have a read of my contract and find out. Out here is a damn sight better than in Fort Joy, eh? Not much, I'll tell you that. Why? What do you think of them? Ha! Huh. I figured you for someone who wouldn't buckle under their yoke so easily. Come on, get your spirits up. I'll wager they can't keep the likes of us locked up too long. Let's poke around and see if we can sniff out some blind spots in their surveillance. The air out here is a damn sight better than in Fort Joy, eh? Now that my contract is fulfilled, I say we get the hell off this island. Me too. A god I don't believe in told me things about myself I don't believe. Yeah. Well, what can I say? Whatever we believe, we still need to live in the here and now. So, let's get back to work. Ifan begins counting on his fingers and muttering to himself. This goes on for quite some time. 43, give or take. Indeed. That's pretty much how I feel about it too. What else do you want to know? Lonely? I wouldn't think so. I went from life in the regiment, to life in the pack, to life on the road with you. I haven't had time to be lonely. He pauses, reddening slightly as he looks at you curiously. Unless, uh... Wait, what did you mean exactly? Ah, yes, of course. Ifan tips his fingers to his temples and saunters ahead. Yes, by all means, let us partake in the art of conversation.
Let's go. Boat first, questions later. Malady grabs the vessel with two hands and pushes it into the water. She hops on board behind you. God woken. Wait till she finds out. Salty water mists your face. Your skin prickles in bright, warm sunlight. The boat bobs forward through the water, and Fort Joy shrinks behind you. Tired but victorious, the party made for the Lady Vengeance. The horrors of Fort Joy behind them. They arrived as sorcerers. They left as Godwoken. The fate of this godforsaken world now rested on their shoulders. Or at least on the shoulders of one of them. A light sea breeze kisses your cheek and carries away the smell of blood wafting up from the deck. In the distance, Fort Joy looms. Don't stand between a prince and his principles. The Magisters learned that the hard way. What were they thinking standing against an Eternal? I almost pity the poor ignorant beasts. I've no sympathy for those who die in the line of duty. Especially as odious a duty as those dead Magisters held. Onward now. The sooner Fort Joy disappears from the horizon, the better. Perhaps the Seekers need help manning the ship. So close to escaping. Spare me, Gareth. We got what we came for. This is what success looks like. I won't see them tossed overboard. Not here. We'll hold a proper service. What's his face and so and so would want us to get this ship sailing before all else? They died for those Godwoken, after all. You know their names, Malady. Can't you even pay them that much respect? Gareth inhales sharply, then catches you out of the corner of his eye and smiles, barely. Our guest stirs. Welcome, Godwoken. Glad to see you safely aboard. Ah, uh, 
very glad indeed. Too many. One too few, actually. Alexander, he's alive. Apparently, didn't hit hard enough. He's in the hold below decks. Unconscious, but alive. Yes, we certainly had better, but the ship won't move. She's mute. We need to free her tongue. You're welcome to try, though I doubt it'll help. What Gareth means to say is don't bother. Livewood will only move when it wants to, or in this tub's case, when it's forced to. That's right. The ship's made of an elven ancestor tree, the spirit of which is still trapped in every plank. What we need is a way to control the bloody thing. The Seekers. The survivors of us have been combing the ship from bow to rudder. It hasn't been easy. This place is laced with dark magic. These Seekers have such a limited skill set. We lost a man in the search. Malady might not appreciate that, but I do. And I hope you do too. I'm sure the God Woken will be able to get the ship moving. They're kind of like to feel useful, don't they? That's the spirit. to deserve that. There you are. I was just thinking of you. This is Dallas's ship, but she can't have been the only one who could get it moving. It'd be too risky. And Dallas is anything but careless. There's a way to move this ship on board, I'm sure of it. Dying to hear them. Meister Siva is one of a rare breed. She'd do anything in the name of a cause, and her cause happens to be you. She's desperate to meet a living Godwoken. She'll be exceedingly pleased we're en route. We'd better not leave her waiting. She's a bit particular. She's the founder of these Seekers, and she's powerful. That means something when I say it. Your kind can reach astounding heights. Meister Siva can help you do just that. The silent monk leans forward slightly and stares at you straight in the eyes. The silent monk leans from... We have to find a way to get this ship moving. We can't let the Magister...
I must say, you may not be an Eternal, but you are certainly not as temporary as many of your fellows. You handled yourself well. Personally, I am just glad that I do not have to walk back to Reaper's Coast. Wind travel may be primitive, but it is at least efficient. Livewood? You have taken a dead elf and carved it into a pleasure yacht? I knew you people were barbarians. I had no idea you were sadists, too. Well, no matter. Whatever gets me to Reaper's Coast quickly. I have an excavation site to explore. The only treasure worth digging for. Knowledge. I was investigating a site where several artifacts of my people have been found. Some were even intact. Alas, I was not the only one there. Those red-robed idiots were scurrying about too, trampling precious clues under their ignorant boots. They caught me when I failed to correctly respond to their questions and dragged me here. Still, it's good to be on the move again. They simply asked me what I was doing there, and I simply told them to be gone from my lands. I may have used the phrase pathetic mortals. Come to think of it, I may have used it several times. Damn fools. The faster we leave them behind, the happier I shall be. Well, you see, I have a rather pressing engagement at the Black... The skeleton breaks off mid-sentence as he notices your hand. He pulls out a notebook, flicking through it, running a finger down the pages. Physical contact, voice lowered, coy looks. Good heavens, is this a mating ritual? Why, that would be excellent. I have been curious about this for some time. The social interactions, the expectations, the mechanics. Come now, let's begin immediately. I shall compile my notes afterwards. Fane grabs your hand and enthusiastically pulls you behind the screen. I, uh, well, that was most unusual. I mean, I had read all the leading authorities on it, but I didn't think. It's just that thing you did with your tongue it was quite unexpected. A team? What an interesting prospect. You certainly seemed capable in Fort Joy, and a companion on Reaper's Coast could be quite educational. Very well. I am open to this. I believe you normally spit on your palms to seal agreements, but I seem to lack the fluid and the desire to touch you. I hope a hearty verbal agreement will suffice. Very well, let's be off. unfair. Well, of course it is. It was crafted with care. 100% ethically harvested from mortals, too. The quality is second to none. Oh, you simply wait until the creature is dead, preferably of natural causes. <laughs> 